Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from our Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with our news. You stay with us. We begin in Venezuela where President Nicolás Maduro stood by the unanimous agreement approved by the Council of State to hold permanent sessions during the COVID-19 pandemic and until it is concluded. The Council of State has decided by consensus and unanimity to declare itself in a permanent and emergency session. Therefore, the Council of State is included in the deliberation for the social and economic protection of the people of Venezuela. Venezuelan president also informed of the eight new COVID-19 cases detected in the country this Tuesday, which raised the total number of infections to 143 cases. I have to inform that as of Thursday, there were eight new cases detected, which means we reached 143 cases. Meanwhile, Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, read out the agreements reached by the Council of State. One of the seven points is the demand for the Venezuelan people to be treated fair and as any other country in the world and be allowed to access its legitimate resources currently blocked by U.S. sanctions. It's urgent that Venezuela can access the resources that legally correspond to the country, which have been locked by the actions of the United States. Likewise, we demand that Venezuela is treated like the rest of the countries of the world and be allowed to access mechanisms of humanitarian aid through financial and multilateral systems, which are being restricted in a directed way by Donald Trump's administration. And the San Lucian authorities are reporting new coronavirus cases, bringing the new total to 13. None of the new cases have traveled recently. On the evening of Monday, March 30th, the laboratory director at the Ezra Long Lab diagnosed an additional four cases of COVID-19, bringing the total confirmed cases in St. Lucia to 13. The first case is a 37-year-old female with no travel history but was in contact with someone within the tourism industry. She presented to our healthcare facility on March 23rd. The second case is a 34-year-old female with no travel history, no known contact with someone with significant travel history and presented to our healthcare facility on March 24th. The third case is a 54-year-old female with no travel history as well and came into the healthcare facility on March 24th. The fourth case is a 40-year-old male with no history of travel but contact with persons with recent travel into St. Lucia. He came into our healthcare facility on March 25th. Prime Minister of Jamaica Andrew Holness has announced additional measures to contain the anticipated spike in novel coronavirus cases, including an island-wide curfew starting on April 1st. Jamaica has confirmed so far 36 COVID-19 cases and one death. Indeed, having gone 20 days since our first case and having seeing that our increase relative to other countries of similar size has been relatively low, we are expecting that there will be a rise, in fact, a significant rise in the number of infections that have been confirmed. Having regard to that, the cabinet carefully considered weighing the economic impact of these measures, but we decided, as we have always done, that the public health is of greater importance. And therefore, I'm announcing today that effective 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. for seven days, starting on April the 1st, there will be an all-island curfew. And the province of Guayas in Ecuador has been the worst hit 
by the COVID-19 pandemic in the country with well over 1,000 confirmed cases. Locals say the government response has been lacking as many are dying in their homes, while authorities often take days to pick up the bodies. We have more for you on the following story. The province of Guayas, in Ecuador's coast, has reported over 1,300 cases of COVID-19. On top of this, endless complaints by citizens on social media denounce a poor response from the government. For their part, authorities have tried to play down the issue by claiming that a disinformation campaign is trying to hurt the government. But the people of Guayaquil tell a different story. El sistema sanitario the health system in Guayaquil collapsed. The phone number implemented by the government to tend to possible cases is a complete failure. Taking the COVID-19 test is expensive. People are dying on the street. We are seeing videos of this every day. Mere blocks from my house, there are bodies on the streets, waiting to be picked up by authorities. People on the street tell similar stories, and they don't know who can help them. There's even rumors that official figures of the pandemic are being reduced significantly. The bodies are not being tested for the virus. My brother died days ago, but we don't know if it was coronavirus, and we'll never know. He was diagnosed with dengue. He was obese and had diabetes. He was a high-risk case. We won't know the truth, and he won't be counted. We couldn't even have a funeral for him. Meanwhile, accusations of corruption in the purchase of emergency equipment have come to light. The agency in charge has announced those involved in the corruption will be fired, as authorities insist the government is carrying out all possible measures to contain the pandemic. We have increased the health care personnel in Guayaquil to take care of these type of emergencies using the appropriate equipment. People will be treated with dignity and respect during these times that we are living. The wave of complaints about the bodies littering the streets of Guayaquil led to President Lenin Moreno to announce the creation of a task force that will make sure the dead receive a proper burial. Impressive images, those coming from Ecuador due to COVID-19 pandemic. Like this, we go for a first break. Remember, follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and on my account at Laura P. Telesur. We'll be right back. We are back with our news on Tuesday. The number of infections from COVID-19 increased to 1,086 in the city of, I mean, 186,000 in the city of New York in the United States, the most affected by the pandemic. In turn, the death toll has reached almost 4,000, while 7,000 others have reportedly recovered. The federal government has launched a $2 trillion stimulus plan to help control and prevent the pandemic. The city of New York is also now under a mandatory quarantine as there are over 40,000 cases, com confirmed cases. United States President Donald Trump has said the next two weeks will be the most difficult in regard to the pandemic. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. We're going to go through a very tough two weeks. And then hopefully, as the experts are predicting, as I think a lot of us are predicting after having studied it so hard, you're going to start seeing some real light at the end of the tunnel. But this is going to be a very painful, very, very painful two weeks. Nurses at the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at the University of California in U.S. held a candlelight vigil on Monday night asking for more protection amid the pandemic. This marked the fifth time nurses have protested and they say they'll
continue to do so if the federal government doesn't give them more protective gear. Like their counterparts at other hospitals, they've been concerned about running low in protective equipment. Suddenly, the first case of a healthcare worker who died from the novel. other than the person was over the age of 60. Our country had time to get ready for this. We knew it was going to be bad. We are the richest, supposed to have the best. We spend more money on health care and, and it's all failing. UCLA announced a new guidance on the permissive use of face masks uh, broadening the number of nurses who have access to face masks. The same day, UCLA also announced new screening protocols for all staff, patients, and visitors entering the medical center and the clinic. Just the other day, California received a shipment of 170 broken ventilators. Broken ventilators from the federal government that was sent from the national stockpile. This is unacceptable. We are in a war with an invisible enemy. And this enemy has already done more damage to the American economy and American society than any other foreign power has in the past. This morning, Governor Newsom announced a temporary executive order that could allow hospitals to shift staffing ratios. As nurses, we fully understand the need to be prepared in the event that this large influx of incoming COVID patients Meanwhile, homeless people in Las Vegas have been directed to a sleep in a parking lot where rectangles were painted on the pavement as a way to limit the spread of the coronavirus measures that have been criticized for, by politicians and other American authorities. And U.S. President Donald Trump has accepted to help offer the help offered by the Russian President Vladimir Putin to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. A spokesman from the Kremlin announced on Tuesday that Russia will send a plane with medical equipment to the United States to help health workers fight COVID-19. Moscow Medical Corporation was one of the topics discussed by Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump during a long telephone call this Monday. The grave situation, the serious situation and the rapid rise of cases in the United States led to the Russian government to offer its help. In the United Kingdom, a Chinese team of medical workers arrived to London to support the new coronavirus pandemic. The fight against the coronavirus pandemic, I must say, the Shoutdown province team is integrated by 15 members and includes like six medical experts specialized in disease prevention and control traditional Chinese medicine and Western medicine, as well as psychological counseling. The team held a video conference with their British counterparts on Monday, sharing Chinese approaches and experiences in the fight against COVID-19. In addition, the Chinese solidarity team brought medical supplies that will be donated to local hospitals. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Britain reached 22,141 cases, according to the latest figures released by the Department of Health and Social Care. In Spain, the government has introduced a set of new measures to mitigate the economic impact of the coronavirus crisis, including a monthly stipend of about 480 US dollars for all temporary workers who were fired due to the state of emergency. All evictions without alternative housing in vulnerable homes are suspended from today until six months after the end of the state of emergency. No one can be evicted from their home. All current rental contracts that are about to expire are automatically extended for six months. A measure that in practice means that no tenant in Spain with a current contract can have their rent raised during the next six months. During the period of the state of emergency, Electricity, water, and gas providers cannot suspend service to any citizen in their permanent homes. Time for another short break here from the South. Make sure you stay with us.
We are back with our news. China's embassy in Algeria handed over a donation of medical supplies to help in the fight against the novel coronavirus. The supplies include 10,000 test kits for COVID-19 and 160,000 surgical masks. A second shipment of aid is expected to arrive in the North African nation from China in the coming days. Algeria has so far confirmed 400 cases of the virus and 26 deaths. We hope that through our efforts, the Algerian people can get through this difficult time and their life can return to normal as soon as possible. Today we are going through a crisis just like other peoples of the world. Under this situation, the Chinese Embassy in Algeria and the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce in Algeria provide supplies to our Algerian red present, making us feel their support to the Algerian people. The Burundian Minister of Health announced the first two cases of new coronavirus in Burumbura, the first officially recognized case in the country. The first patient of Burundian nationality, aged 56, residing in Bujumbura, returned from Rwanda. He was hospitalized and presented asymptomatology in the form of a simple flu since March 18, 2020. The second patient, also of Burundian nationality, aged 42, resident in Bujumbura, returned from Dubai via Rwanda. And Gaza factories in Palestine and are, are attending COVID-19 situation at pivoting its regular production to masks in homemade corona response. As demands for medical wear increase in the region, not only in the country, but in neighboring countries like Israel, factories which specialize in manufacturing clothes are turning their production into sewing masks aimed to prevention of contracting the COVID-19 epidemic, which has swept the globe. Now Israel is in a crisis. Without the crisis, Israel would not have asked us to work. The whole world today is in a crisis, not only Israel. We and Israel are neighbors and we depend on each other in certain things. I hope that Israel depends on Gaza, and I urge Israel to depend on Gaza for its industry. Suddenly the situation changed and all the world became focused on mask manufacturing. As for the sewing factories, they are all making masks and the local work has stopped, such as making pants, shirts. It is all on whole new. And authorities in Egypt lead up the pyramids of Giza this Monday night and an expression of support for health workers battling the coronavirus outbreak. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you for those keeping us safe. The mess read the message emblazoned on the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Egyptian government has also extended the closure of the country's famed museums and archaeological sites, including the pyramids and the Sphinx at Giza, until at least April 15. Egypt has reported more than 600 infections and 40 deaths from the virus. With this image coming straight from Egypt, we come to the end of this brief. Until next time.